Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. The man suspected of killing six people in our area was a federal informant and released from federal custody. We're expecting Detroit Police Chief James Craig's comments about this at any moment. Justin, Brazil announcing the first case of the coronavirus in South America. The virus now on every continent except Antarctica. The Centers for Disease Control issuing a stark warning. The U.S. will not be immune. It's not so much a question of if this will happen anymore, but rather more a question of exactly when this will happen. Next at noon, a closer look inside the outbreak that shows no signs of slowing down. But first, the winter weather alert declared by the local forecasters that has also prompted many schools to be closed today. We're continuing to monitor the skies and for live radar and the snow's pretty widespread. The weather does top our news this noon as we take a look at the radar for what's happening out there. And of course, we're seeing some breaks in the snow, Brandon, but we certainly have plenty falling on the ground as well. Yeah, more snow and fewer breaks moving forward, Rhonda. We have always tried to relay the message that the concern maybe for schools would be through the afternoon getting the kids home and some more intense snow. Winter weather advisory continues all the way through the evening hours for travel concerns and we are seeing the snow filling back in so we do have a little break or lull in the action here. You see down south and west through Lenaway, Jackson counties, heavier bands of snow trying to push on through. It is a little bit breezy out there as well. We have upper 20s to near freezing. Live look here in Mount Clemens and you can see it's gray but no snow currently an issue there. Wind chills teens to low 20s. So temps hovering right around freezing, but really feeling colder than that. We do expect more and more in the way of snow as we push through the rest of this afternoon and this evening's drive. You can see quite a bit still to come and model data is suggesting on top of about two inches that we've already got about another two to three still to come. Rhonda. Brandon, thank you. Turning our attention now to the coronavirus. Stocks are rising today as the market tries to find some stability after two consecutive days of sharp selling. That market turbulence prompted by the spread of the coronavirus as we take a live look at the board right now. The number of new cases of these coronavirus infections outside China has outpaced those inside the country for the first time. That is according to the World Health Organization. Health authorities here in the United States are warning that it is a matter of when, not if, the virus would spread expansively across the country. The political climate in Washington complicating the public health challenge. President Trump is going to be holding a news conference at 6 o'clock to address his administration's response to the outbreak this evening. He continues to blame the media and Democrats for overstating the danger of the disease, even as health experts are issuing stark warnings. Meantime, Brazil announcing the first case of the coronavirus in South America, the virus now on every continent except Antarctica. The total number of cases globally has now reached more than 80,900 people. Nearly 3,000 people have died. Tom Costello takes a closer look inside the crisis. The Centers for Disease Control says the coronavirus could soon turn into a pandemic sweeping across the globe, and the U.S. will not be immune. It's not so much a question of if this will happen anymore, but rather more a question of exactly when this will happen and how many people in this country will become infected. With just 57 known cases in the U.S., the CDC says the U.S. risk is low for now. But employers and schools should be prepared to limit travel and large meetings, allow workers to telework, be ready to close schools or allow Internet school work, and hospitals may need to delay elective surgeries. Meanwhile, the virus continues its global march from China to Japan to South Korea to Singapore to Italy. Deserted streets, empty airports, but long lines for surgical masks that are running low. The spike in cases in Italy, leading some American universities to suspend their study abroad programs. 
In South Korea, the first U.S. service member has now tested positive for the virus. The diagnosis coming just one day after the U.S. and South Korea announced they were considering scaling back joint military exercises over coronavirus concerns. In Iran, the country's health minister, who had said the virus is under control as he showed symptoms himself, later announced he too is sick. With a 2% mortality rate at the epicenter in China, the coronavirus seems to be far deadlier than the seasonal flu. But in India, President Trump downplayed the risk. You may ask about the uh, coronavirus, which is um, you know, very well under control in our country. The White House is asking Congress for $2.5 billion in emergency funding to deal with the crisis. Leading Democrats and some Republicans say that's hardly enough. This morning, the world's eyes on a virus that shows no signs of slowing down. Very concerning, Tom. Thank you. Right now, here at home, there are no confirmed coronavirus cases in Michigan. New at noon, a Mumford High School swimming teacher has been placed on administrative leave after one of its students dies. 15-year-old Deshaun Blanding was found unresponsive in the pool on Monday. That teacher will remain on leave as an investigation is completed. Meanwhile, a GoFundMe page has been created to help Blanding's family with funeral expenses. And he should have never been on the streets. That is what Detroit Police Chief James Craig is saying about the suspected serial killer accused of six murders. This afternoon, we are learning a lot more about Kenyel Brown's past. Nick Monticelli takes a closer look. Good afternoon. Yes, some new details should be coming very shortly on this case. But the bottom line is this alleged serial killer was in federal custody, had a whole list of parole violations while he was out on a charge and now an agency allegedly is the one who told the Department of Justice to let him back out. He saw him and then, you know, he came out from in the back, pulled up the guy's picture on his phone, showed the clerk that was working and said, hey, look, I really think this is who this is. A janitor working at an adult bookstore Monday spotted the man wanted by the U.S. Marshals and Detroit police. Police have linked Kenyell Brown to six murders in River Rouge, Highland Park and Detroit. They spotted Brown jumping fences and only local four cameras were there as officers swarmed a backyard and captured Brown moments after he shot himself in the head. But now we're learning Brown has a criminal history dating back to 1997 and should have been in prison, but a federal law enforcement agency asked he be let out. That history includes assault with a dangerous weapon, fleeing police officers and multiple weapons charges. During his last arrest in 2014, for having a stolen 9 millimeter handgun, he told police, I didn't even fire the gun. The only reason I have the mag is because it's crazy out here. During his sentencing, it came out Brown was working as an informant. After serving 14 months, Brown was let out, but he failed drug tests, didn't check in with drug counselors, and was arrested for drunk driving while on probation. But he was let go. The Detroit News quoting a U.S. District Court spokesman saying, our court released Mr. Brown at the behest of a federal law enforcement agency. We cannot elaborate further at this time. Detroit Police Chief James Craig told the newspaper, someone needs to explain to the families of Brown's victims why this guy was allowed to stay out of prison. I understand the need for informants, but was the information he provided worth six lives? Now, as far as a medical condition on him, the last time we checked, even though he shot himself in the head, he was still in critical condition. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Nick, thank you. Very powerful remarks on behalf of the family by Chief Craig, who happens to be speaking right now. He's holding a press conference right now at DPD headquarters. You are looking live at that right now. We will continue to monitor everything he says and bring you an update before the end of our newscast. So to come in the hot seat, Defense Secretary Mark Esper being grilled on Capitol Hill. The reason why after the break.